What's up you guys, welcome back to this week's Manga Sushi Manga Review and as you can see from the title of this video we're going to be talking about different styles of plot progression depending on the genre of manga. Now me personally I like to read martial arts action and adventure manga for instant gratification. I like to see the fights, I like to read about the different enemies that the main character and supporting characters will be fighting and going up against but I also like to see the growth of the main character whether that's new techniques, new moves, or new abilities um, so on and so forth but for the long term I like to read horror, sci-fi, and slice of life manga because the plot progression is a lot more interesting now what I mean by that is, in my opinion, when it comes to martial arts, action, and adventure manga, they follow a linear point A to point B style of plot progression. With point A, we have the main character that is untalented, or is a beginner in a certain um, area or field. Or they have raw potential, but it's untapped, and that they don't know about it then they are forced into a certain situation that caused them to rise above the fray and this puts them on a path or a journey or sets them to a certain field that leads them to a certain goal now whether this is to be the very best pokemon trainer or be pokemon champion or to be the best martial arts fighter in a certain um, martial respect or field or discipline or to take down and evil villain in a certain kingdom or region or area or to get revenge so on and so forth like that but it's a linear point A to point B style of progression and the way this progression is usually implemented is you know along the way the main character learns a technique or might learn an ability or might learn a move or might make friends they go up against an enemy or a villain or antagonist they defeat the antagonist and they get stronger or the antagonist defeats them initially the first time then the main character um, doubles down on some training focuses on themselves develops a new skill or taps into a new type of um, ability then comes back for a rematch and beats the big bad guy at the end of the series um, and while it is entertaining to read for a short term instant gratification point of view after a certain amount of um, action, martial arts, and adventure mangas, it gets repetitive and it gets boring. Now, for me, I like to read horror, sci-fi, slice of life manga because the plot progression isn't so linear. And what I mean by that is there's different sub-genres of horror mangas. You have survivalist competition horror mangas in which the plot progression isn't from point A to point B. We don't have this main character that lacks any type of um, skill or potential and is going down to this um, linear plot path to become the very best at something. You have a main character that is thrown into a survival scenario where they have to compete up against several other people and they might not even make it out alive. So pretty much every single chapter in itself is just a different plot and I love reading those type of um, sub horror genres because you can also make a lot of predictions for other characters in it. It's not just simply focused entirely on the main character. The main character's survivability depends on the alliances and the interactions he makes with a lot of other characters and that gives a lot of room for character development and predictions of who's going to go, who's going to stay, who's going to be voted out, so on and so forth and for me I love predictions predictions are a big part of reading a manga to me and that's what makes it really enjoyable to make a prediction and for it to either come true or to not come true and that's something horror mangas have that I really like but another thing that I also think is particularly unique to horror manga is that um, isn't exactly too common when it comes to martial arts adventure or action mangas is we have the degradation of the main character's morals or ethics like in Dead 2 we start off with our main character who is basically a kid in the film club and he's this innocent virgin guy who's nice kind and everything and then this girl comes along asks him to do what is seemingly a simple and innocent um, task and then he spirals into this um, path to darkness 
And we see later on in different chapters of Dead Tube that our main character has an evil side. And no longer is he the innocent cameraman that we knew from um, the first chapter. And we see that type of struggle going on with our main character. Like, there's... Um, he still has good in him. You know, his still basic moral ethics is good. You know, he likes to do the right thing. He wants to believe in the good of other people. And if he can avoid committing horrible and atrocious acts, he does that. But we also see as the manga progresses that he becomes less averse to taking these dark actions. And he starts to enjoy it more and more and more and more. And that's not something that you see often in a martial arts or action or adventure manga. Because in those type of mangas, um, the main character is generally good. Most of the time. And, you know, the character might have some faults here and there, but they generally rebound. They bounce back to the basic um, good guy, you know, baseline. But in horror mangas, we have situations where the main characters first, like, you know, espouse these um, holier-than-thou ethics and, you know, everybody has to survive. And, you know, if nobody survives... I won't participate, I won't I won't do this, I won't do that, I can't hurt somebody. But then as we see as the manga progresses, um the main character becomes less and less averse or less and less um guided by those very same ethics and morals they touted at the beginning of the manga. And they start going by a more pragmatic sense of morals and ethics. And that's what I like about horror mangas. But with Slice of Life it doesn't necessarily follow a point A to point B plot progression in the sense that, you know, you have this main character with um, no abilities or no talent or whatsoever, and then there's an end goal. With Slice of Life, it pretty much flows whatever path it wants to flow. There is no point B, you know, there is no end game. And that's the same thing with romance mangas that I like as well. There is specifically no end game. Like, with martial arts action and adventure mangas there's nothing beyond point B let's say Ash Ketchum managed to become Pokemon champion champion so what what what's beyond that the elite four I mean Pokemon champion is endgame and the only reason Pokemon has managed to continue as long as it has is because Ash keeps losing each and every time and he manages to reset in a different region so on and so forth um in other types of manga and other types of um, anime series, like with One Piece, Luffy wants to be Pirate King. After he becomes Pirate King, that's pretty much endgame. He's reached the top of the summit. There's not much else from there to go. Um, the same thing with Naruto. The dudes become Okage now. And in the anime and the manga, I felt one of the biggest faults that they went with is um, they took down Kaguya. And she was pretty much the goddess or deity in the shinobi world. You ended the entire manga with them taking out a deity. A deity level um, person with pretty much godlike ninjutsu, taijutsu, genjutsu, so on and so forth. And now you want to come up with this subset series, um, Boruto, where everybody has almost these broken abilities and... You know, there's no type of character growth or development going on. And you want to introduce these aliens from different worlds. I think they could have stretched Naruto out a little bit more if they didn't introduce Kaguya so quickly as they did. And that is because the point A to point B plot progression that goes on. And once you reach that plateau, once you reach that peak, there's no going beyond that. There's only downhill from there. And that's what I don't like about martial arts action and adventure mangas because once the main characters reach that goal, once they reach that summit, there's nothing else to do. I mean, they pretty much accomplished everything they set out to do. But with Slice of Life, there is no summit. There is no summit that you know of from the get-go. Um, you know, it just pretty much takes its own pace. It's slow. It's a steady thing. And it can go a lot of different ways. The character interactions. And the same thing with romance. Except with romance, it's kind of a little bit more predictable. It kind of follows a somewhat linear 
plot progression, but it's not the same thing as a martial arts or action or adventure manga in that sense. And what I mean by that is in a romance manga, you know two characters are going to hook up. Okay, you know that's gonna happen. You know that's gotta be end game. You know they're the one true pair, the one true couple. But at the same time, you don't really know how it's gonna happen. You don't really know if different um people are going to come into the situation and change the feelings of the main character or in the other other characters and so on and so forth. And that's something I felt in No Bra. Like, in No Bra, we had our two characters. We had um, them both being childhood friends. We knew that there were feelings there. We knew that there was feelings between the two of them. But as the manga progressed, we figured out there was a third player in the um, love triangle. And that shifted a lot of the um, feelings of the characters towards each other. And that also made the end game of No Bra a lot less... Um, certain a lot less um predictable and that's what i like about those different types of um manga but that's not to say martial arts action and adventure mangas and other mangas like that are boring you know they are great to read i love reading sunken rock i read it over and over and over again i also love reading wolf guy and it's just you know the instant gratification is an amazing thing to have but also, I think another thing that's important with a manga is the longevity of it. How long can it keep you attached? And how long can it keep you drawn into the plot? And if it doesn't have that um, longevity or that shelf life, then it doesn't matter. And that makes it worse, especially if a manga or an anime doesn't have longevity or a shelf life and they still try to continue it on after it's already hit its peak, like with Naruto. It was better off that they ended the series with him being Hokage and you know we find out okay well he has kids and so on and so forth, but just end it there. But to forcefully continue it on into Boruto and to execute Boruto the way they did, um, it brings the whole series down. It brings the entire Naruto series down and I feel like Boruto is probably for new generations of anime and uh, manga readers and viewers, but at the same time, it's just a different beast than what Naruto was, and it doesn't honor the original Naruto series the same. But I don't know. I went off on a completely different tangent than what this video was supposed to be about. But that's just my opinion of different styles of plot progression depending on the genres of manga and anime. Now, what do you think of um, mon well, of like martial arts, action, adventure, manga, or sci-fi, romance, slice of life, horror? What's your favorites? Why? What's your least favorites? And why? Bye.